So I'm going to make a brake seal for you. And what a brake seal is, it's a way of getting things into a vacuum chamber while maintaining really high vacuum. And it's a single piece of glassware where, oh, it's very ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of melt the end of this, which hopefully you'll be able to see. Let me see if I can focus on something sensible here. Um, I'm going to melt the end of this and then I'm going to suck backwards. This is going to be molten and I'm going to suck it towards me and suck a bubble on the inside here and then I'm going to join that on the back side and actually I'm going to try and join it on this side so if you heat glass up too quickly it'll crack um, especially um, it, it depends on the glass sometimes yes sometimes no um, I'm going to go for these two ends it's the ends I'm going to use and there's a crack I see them propagating so I'm going to heat them up slowly. With this one it doesn't matter so much because this is the end that I'm going to be melting and, and pulling the brakes on. Now you'll get quite a lot of sodium coming off this which might sort of blind you to what's going on. I've got Dictinium Spectral which, yeah, like that. Um, so I can actually see really well what's going on here. I'm going to try and keep it out of the flame as much as possible so you can see what's going on. So at the moment all I'm doing is just melting the end here. Then what I'm going to do is I've got to close it up, but I've got to close it up and keep it fairly thin because I've got to suck a bubble in it. So there we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm just pulling off and sealing the end of the tube. Oh, and that's not bad. That might, that, yeah, I think we're going to go for that. And I'm going to take a bit more off. You've got to get your glass. Oops. Uh, just the right thickness. This is a real... Um, right, now comes the real tricky bit. I'm going to suck the bubble. And I completely screwed it up. So, let's see what we know about taking that off. And doing another one. Like I was saying, you only get you, you get one chance to do it, and um, I, I get it nine times out of ten. But also, I'm just screw some of them up. Okay, here we go. Here we go again. There we go. That's a nice one. Nice little bubble pulled on the inside there. Now I can't let this cool down too much, otherwise it will. Um, crack when I put it in the flame, it gets fairly fragile this, so you've got to you got to do it all in one go or not at all. So now I'm going to melt these two sides of the glass and push them all together like that. Now I've got to melt them all, even it all out, make a nice join between these two. And I'll probably struggle to see what's going on at the moment. Pull that in a second and there we go. A little blowing, a little pulling, and that's about right. So now I have a little bubble on the inside of this tube. Now I've got to. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. That's fine. Um, okay, man. Right, I'm going to put that down to cool down for a second. Um, Now, I'm, I'm going to join one end on this, and I need a Young's tap for the other side, and there it is. Well, I've already done a little bit of work on the Young's tap, so this is where I'm, we're going to put on the vacuum. Then this is going to be the fantastic, you, you see why these, when they've got a seal well, um, on the Teflon ring, so these are almost perfect vacuum seals, these things. Then, uh, so what we're going to do is, Brake seal is going to be down here. We put it all into a glove box, fill it all up with argon, take the barrel out, put some sodium in here while it's under argon, put the barrel back in, and then and we're going to attach this to the apparatus such that we can put the sodium in without it ever getting exposed 
to the atmosphere, or the oxygen or the nitrogen in the atmosphere. So, uh, the both ends of this have to be connected to that, and uh, this one I think I'm just going to cut so about there somewhere I reckon. This one, I'm actually going to do a, a melt cut and then blow it out. So, fresh glass tends to be a little more robust than stuff that's been worked. Uh, so it's actually fairly difficult to crack this stuff. But it does need annealing if you're going to be harsh with it like I'm being at the moment. That's heating it up and cooling it down relatively quickly. So once I've got a nice little molten patch in here, what I'm going to do, because uh, I'm just, I'm just going to pull it quickly, thins out the glass when I do that, seal it up like that. Now I'm going to blow a bubble on this, which is always kind of fun. Yay, bubble. And then get rid of all the extra glass. Blowing the bubbles gives you a really nice clean uh, seal. Other way of doing it is you use graphite. Graphite's absolutely fantastic stuff for working glass because it doesn't leave any residual on the glass. So when you touch the glass with it, if it's too hot, it just burns a bit off the graphite and the graphite never sticks to the, the glass. So uh, that's another way of doing it. So once we're sort of melted, melted down a bit to get us a bit of a, a rim for a join there, that's almost perfect. All right, leave that one to cool for just a second. Which now means that we're back onto this guy. Um, right, how are we gonna do this? That I'm happy just to do the straight join with. Then I'm gonna have to let it cool down before I do the other side. Well, just so there are no surprises. Ooh, ooh, still quite toasty. So this is one of the weird things about glass is when it's red hot, you don't the burn you still get burned by it, but it's not as bad as the burns that you can get when it's at like three, four hundred degrees. So glass at three or four hundred degrees Celsius looks just like this. Apart from when you touch it, your finger comes into direct contact with the glass, so you get really bad burns. If it's red hot when you're doing that, there's just a sort of fizzing sound and your finger doesn't stick to the glass. So you, you do get a burn, it's just more of a steam burn. Right, that's, that's actually going to be fairly tricky to break because I don't have much leverage, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, what? The break's not too bad, good. Always a little tricky to do those. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to do this one first, seeing as we are already warm on this piece and he is, he's quite toasty and a lot of it is working out um, you, you need to be able to blow on a sealed system so obviously if it's a if there's a hole in the system <laughs> you try and blow you you get nothing incidentally the, the, the glass blowing is just one of the most fantastic skills I learnt it fairly early on um, during my PhD actually um, and it's just been one of the most fantastically useful skills ever. I've just used it again and again. It's just so useful being able to make little pieces of glassware for specific purposes. Alright, so let's get this guy all melted up. Well, it's melted enough that we can seal it. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is not the world's prettiest piece of glass. But then again, I don't usually I don't usually give a running commentary whilst I'm doing this. So yeah, I usually just get some trance music on and uh, yeah, it's getting there. And just yeah, it can be quite therapeutic actually. You always burn yourself quite a lot when you're learning, by the way. Um, but once you're off the learning curve, it's, it's a long time since I've burned myself in the glass. Um, yeah, you, you you get this when you're learning. You always always keep forgetting that just because it looks like normal glass, 
that doesn't mean you can pick it up. Quite often it can be at several hundred degrees Celsius and you get some really decent burns. Um, I don't really have to do this, I'm just being a bit of a perfectionist now. Well, perfectionist is uh, an overstatement. But the, the thing about these brake shields is they're only ever going to be used once, so they don't need to be particularly fancy or anything. So I'm going to have to let that cool down now before I do the last join, which is to put that one on there. This is just way too hot to hold. And I can't cool it down rapidly, because if I do, that one thing I couldn't do is I kind of kneel this, which is... Usually for the kneeling, you just need to heat it up such that you're getting sodium off the glass. If I, if I heat this again quickly, it'll just crack. Uh, the brake seal. Brake seals are fairly fragile once they've been made. You only get one chance to make them, and, and that's it. So now I'm just going to cool the glass down a little more slowly with the sort of cherry flame. Good. And usually once you get the flame behind it, uh, you, you can see if there's any stress in the glass, or at least any bad stress in the glass. And this is sort of functional. It's a bit stressed up here, but other than that, it's not bad. Alright, so we'll leave that to cool down, and I've got one last join today. Okay, the joyous time has come for the last join. So for this one, obviously I've got to blow down from this side, for which it's important that I open the tap, otherwise the whole thing, yeah, glass will just collapse on itself. Another thing, if it's a sealed system, obviously when it gets hot, it'll cause pressure of its own, so glass will just blow bubbles on its own if you heat a sealed system. Anyway, so we are now ready for the last join. So I made a few more in the meantime. Um, a lot of science involves fairly menial stuff. Uh, it's fairly therapeutic, I suppose, in some ways. It's like ironing or something, but just a little, a little hotter. So this one I've got to narrow down just a little to get down to down the right dimensions to join onto this. This thing's going to be a pain in the ass. If you can rotate, you have to rotate both sides at the same speed, and having big, heavy thing on here just makes it a pain in the ass. Uh, I think we'll be okay. So let's go get both sides nice and toasty. And that's not far off a seal. And it's a seal. So you blow on it, and if it's leaking, eh, you've probably not got a seal. So I've just got to even all of this out. Switch so things a little tricky bit. So you've got a, both ends are sort of free floating in space, and you've got to hold them in the right sort of spatial position. You've got to control both hands and and keep the join in the right place. Otherwise, uh, the join just goes all over the place. I'll, I'll probably do a demo actually of just how bad things can go. This is actually not too bad. I'm just going to give it one last jolt to even it out. And it's actually worse than it was. A little blobby on one side. Yeah, that's life. One of the nice things about glass burn is you can, you, you do get a second shot at these things. Um, can they eat that? Nice and even, bit of blowing. And a little bit of pulling, and that's not too bad. Good. So he's nice and straight now. All straight enough. Let's get a bit more orange light behind there, see so what's going on. So that's one of the joins. There's the brake seal. And yeah, so we back it out, um, put it into the glove box, fill it up with argon, take the barrel out, put some sodium in here, close the tap. This is just going to be put onto the kit. This is, if I was being really keen, I would actually have an all glass seal onto the kit I'm trying to get the sodium in. Then you get your little magnet, break the break, this little thin piece of glass, and sodium falls in, and it never touched any of our atmosphere. None of the oxygen, none of the carbon dioxide, none of the nitrogen. So let me just give you a quick demo of what things can 
just how badly things can go wrong. So let's get a couple of pieces of glass. They look really useful to me. Right. That looks junky. And okay, here's two chunky pieces of glass. So let's add that they're fairly thick as well. So um, we need more heat. More heat. Oh, flame. There we go. That's more like it. Good. Super. So, let's just say I wasn't paying too much attention and I melt up both sides of the glass. That's nice and even. I can't blow on this because it's not sealed or I'd have to put a finger over one side. It's going to be tricky. But let's just uh, seal it up like that. Oh, God damn, this is hot. Oh, oh, toasty, toasty. Oh, oh, oh. But if I'm not paying attention, oh god, ow, ooh, ooh. Okay, that's, that's too hot. I'm going to have to deal with longer pieces of glass. Right, okay, I'm going to need some really decent pieces. I don't want to chop them down later. There we go, right, so these are two nice pieces of glass. And it cracks immediately because I put it in too hot. But that doesn't matter, because what do you gonna do? Right, so first things first, I just need to melt all this up. And so this is nice, I can rotate both at the same speed, but if I actually manage to, once it gets nice and molten in the middle, of course, I can rotate one side quicker than the other, and it, it, it turns into a blob very quickly. Um, and y you can sometimes rescue it, but as a general rule, no, you can't. Um, so yeah, you just twist it. Um, so a lot of the skill is being able to, or the other one that's fairly common, is you've got to hold both sides, and if one, ha one side drifts, <laughs> you get this sort of effect. Um, so you you've got to be able to hold your hands it, it's basically, it's as if the two pieces of glass aren't connecting. You've got to hold them in the right place whilst you're all moving it around. So that, that's a lot of the skill of, of glass playing is this sort of, um, at least the free hand work like this. Once you actually get a lathe on it, it eh, some bits will become much easier. Anyway, so that's how to make brake seal. Just like that. Now, there's one last test with the brake seal, of course. It's completely useless unless it can actually hold a vacuum. So, and they, they, they by no means all pass this test, by the way. So, first of all, I'm just going to get that under vacuum. <laughs> so, he's down to two millibar. And, right, now comes the real moment of truth. When I open the tap, does the seal pop? They almost always survive, but that doesn't mean they all survive. And the answer is, yeah, he holds the vacuum. Good. Now there's one last test, last, last test, which is I need to get the high voltage tester on here to make sure there are no pinholes. Which, okay, there we go, we're up. That means that we've, uh, once we can hear the sparks going, and you can get sparks on the end here. Obviously there's no conduction. You only get the conduction once you get the vacuum. Below the brake seal there's nothing. But it's quite common that you can get pinholes around the brake seal and if you get those, the whole thing's junk. So, we're now down to one millibar. I could get the decent vacuum meter on, but this is fine. Okay, so that is one successfully made vacuum seal.